there are two worlds that we live in. The world of the large, the world we can see, which is familiar, calm, and predictable. And there's the world of the small, the world we can't see, the quantum world, which is bizarre, chaotic, and unpredictable. The large is described by Einstein's equations of relativity, and the small is described by the equations of quantum mechanics. These two parts of nature are seemingly utterly incompatible when it comes to the equations of physics. The small is ruled by three forces, the strong nuclear force, the weak force, and electromagnetism. The large is ruled by gravity. Gravity is not like the other forces, and nobody has been able to figure out how it is related to the other forces. String theory attempts to do just that. And if it can, it would unite the large and the small worlds of our universe into one set of equations and would explain all particles and forces in the universe. This could be the theory of everything. It could answer one of the biggest questions in cosmology. Why do we exist? What is it and what does it have to say about reality? That's coming up right now. String theory dispenses with the idea that the tiniest particles in nature are points. Rather, string theory hypothesizes that at the smallest scales, nature is made of tiny vibrating bits of energy in the shape of filaments or strings. According to string theory, all the elementary particles in the standard model are not points, but rather vibrating strings. Different vibrations of a string create the different particles, like different vibrations of piano strings create different notes. So according to string theory, for example, one vibration may result in an electron, another may result in an up quark, and so forth. In fact, the unique vibrations of these strings determine the mass, electric charge, and spin of all elementary particles. And it so happens that in one of its vibrations, a particle that has the properties of a graviton emerges from the mathematics of string theory. The graviton is a theoretical quantum particle that would carry the force of gravity, and this is the key to uniting the large and the small worlds of physics. Thus, string theory can model quantum gravity similar to the way loop quantum gravity also models quantum gravity. Okay, so if we can model gravity at the quantum scale, then our work should be done. We should have a theory of everything, right? Well, not exactly. There's this nagging problem of confirmation through observation. You might say, well, all we have to do is look inside these elementary particles, and if we find a string, we're done. String theory would be confirmed. The problem is that the math predicts these strings to be extremely small. If an atom was the size of the Earth, one string would be the size of a two-inch piece of yarn. To detect something this small, we would need a particle accelerator the size of the Milky Way galaxy. So detecting them physically is out of the question. There is another imaginary leap you have to make that I didn't tell you about earlier, and that is that these strings are not three-dimensional, but rather one-dimensional. So they have a size in only one dimension. They are really little more than bits of energy. And in order to make the various particles emerge from its mathematics, these strings need to vibrate in nine spatial dimensions. But as you know, we only know about three dimensions, up and down, right and left, forward and backward. So where are the other six dimensions? String theorists will tell you that these dimensions are so small that we cannot perceive them. This is similar to a rug. From a distance, it looks three-dimensional, but up close you can see that it has loops and weaves. These would be analogous to the extra dimensions that we can't see in our ordinary space. One of the exciting things about string theory is that it makes some strange cosmological predictions, which may explain the nature of existence. Just like vibrations through a French horn versus a trumpet are different because of the difference in the twists and turns of the instrument, the vibrational patterns of strings are also different depending on the shape of the extra dimensions. We happen to be living in a universe where the shapes of the extra dimensions are such that the universe that we observe happens to exist. And here is a 2D representation of what our 6D universe would look like. It is called a Kalabi-Yaw manifold. You can learn more about this strange shape in the link in the description. It so happens that if the shape of the extra dimensions are slightly different, a different universe can emerge. These would be universes with completely different properties than ours. So this is how string theory implicates that we may be living in a multiverse, where we just happen to be on a kind of membrane of a multitude of membranes, which may contain other universes. This implies that we exist because if you have a near infinite number of universes with lots of different properties, then a universe like ours, where gravity can form planets and complex molecules can form life, is bound to exist. 
And if we are living in a membrane, then the mathematics shows that a collision with another membrane would have caused energy on a huge scale, which would look a lot like the Big Bang, which is of course what we observe. By the way, the laws of physics in the other membranes may be completely different. So the other potential universes are not necessarily those with alternate Earths or your evil twin. While this multiverse is present in the mathematics of string theory, it also presents a problem. If string theory can model lots of other universes, then its detractors argue that it's nothing more than a mathematical construct. In other words, the mathematics can be made to model anything, they argue. Its insights are not unique to our universe, and it may be just a bunch of mathematical BS. But the bottom line on the verdict for string theory is this. The majority of physicists working on a theory of everything are doing it using string theory. So it boasts a lot of very smart people as its supporters. And the history of science should tell us not to dismiss ideas because they run counter to our sensibilities or intuition. Hey guys, did you enjoy that? Check out some of our other videos. This is what I recommend. This is what YouTube recommends. And if you haven't done so already, then be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Join the conversation. I'll see you in the comments below.